Hey. <laughs> How y'all doing? <laughs> you know. Hey. <laughs> what is this intro? Like, what? I got paid $50 for being the best mod of the week, but I didn't have my phone that... Oh, wow. Because it expired. I'm probably your most watched viewer. Yeah, probably. Anyways. How y'all doing, YouTube? Hope you guys having a great day. And, uh, you know, uh, we back here. Still on Twitch. Kick might be coming soon. Probably not. Anyways, man. We got Degenerosity. This is two weeks old. I know I'm late. Uh, but we haven't reacted to him in a minute, man. It's been a minute since we reacted to him. So, uh, let's see who are the best artists I fell the hell off, man. If you guys are having a great day, make sure y'all hit the like button. If you're not, hit the like button, man. I hope you have a great day watching this video, bro. Alright, you know what I mean? It's all love over here. What are y'all talking about? I don't know what y'all talking about. Longevity. A long Excuse duration of individual life. Some are long lived, while others are cut short. Not only can this be applied to living, Ooh. but also in all art and entertainment. Like, will this piece of work stand a test of time to be remembered as great? Or will it be put in a modern art museum? Only time can tell. And many music artists throughout all the years had faded away alongside time. Okay. It's crazy to think about, because some of these artists, or at least the oh. years, had faded away alongside time. It's crazy to think about. Oh, does he look like me? Chat, does he look like me? Y'all gonna say you look like me too, right? Does Justin sh Nas? Is that Kendra? You know what? I hate all y'all, bro. <laughs> I hate you, bro. Does this look like me, ready? Or no? Do you look... But some of these artists, or at least their songs, were all over the radio and playlists and constantly being replayed. But by next year, nobody's even having a thought about their music, let alone the artist. Their relevance was like receiving a happy ending from a ladyboy in Thailand. It lasts a good minute, but hey, it yo. finishes pretty quick. Don't judge my hobbies. Some get the stinky end of this deal by having short bursts of fame, then run straight into irrelevance for the rest of their, well... Lives and the rest are lucky enough to be one hit wonders with their hits being so timeless that we never forget them Like who can forget a thousand miles by what's her name? I swear every time that song comes on in a crowded place Every bad thing that's going on in the world at that moment comes to a halt and all of us sing along and oh, Y'all better say y'all better smile My 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 bad I had to do my b-roll bro Kinda of, I was late. Perfect sync. This song legit brings world peace. She doesn't need another hit. And Silent Hill with Watch Me Win, Watch Me Nene. I mean, none of us are playing that song nowadays, but when it was out, it was big. Nah, like dude, all the Now that dude can fit the fella now. Nah. Kids were dancing that song, playing it everywhere. You couldn't escape it. And to show how much of a phenomenon this song was, it was played at the biggest award show in the world. The Kids' Choice Award. You can't get bigger than that. That's a career peak for anybody. The impact of that song was insane. So you know the fall gotta be equal to that. Yeah, Cause man, after the song man. wasn't hot no more, the man fell off so hard, he murdered his cousin. That's tough. There was Young Ma with Ooh. This song will forever be a club hit. Shame she didn't have another. But at least some party or club somewhere will always be playing it. Well, I don't know. I'm not allowed in clubs, so. Estelle's American Boy, it hurts saying she's a one-hit wonder, but the song is amazing. Also, with a goaded verse from the GOAT, the song is genuinely perfect. Well, she ain't really a one-hit wonder if you count the hits she made on Steven Universe. Oh. But forget everything I, I just said. When we think about the best art- Bo, nah, because I used to be the biggest Chance the Rapper fan, bro. I used to be the biggest Chance the Rapper fan. This dude fell off so bad. So bad, bro. Like, this dude might have been, like, one of the biggest fall-offs I've ever seen. Do you know what? Young boy and white be finna... Lady, I'm about to fucking time you out, bro. <laughs> but no, nah, but Like, see, I had a... Hold on, I'm gonna find it. I'm gonna show y'all proof. I'm gonna show y'all proof on how I was the biggest, biggest Chance the Rapper fan, bro. Hold on. Where is it at? Where is it at? I, it's in here. Hold on. Wait, wait a minute, bro. Look, hold on, chat. Look, 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 bro. Look, look. Hold on. <laughs> look, bro. You wanna 
pomo, mano, pomo, e vem. Eu era. I told y'all, bro. I was the biggest chance to rapper fan, bro. It's back in like seventh grade. Seventh, eighth grade, biggest chance to rapper fan. From lit hey he's lit. What are you talk what? I don't care. Bro, I'm telling y'all, like I'm not cap I like bro, I'm not capping, bro. I was the biggest chance to rapper fan. Artists to fall off. We think of the ones that had a big breakout song, an album that you made people own. think this okay. person will be here for the long run. They will become a household off. name, <laughs> only for them it's to be in love and hip hop a few years later. I'm sadly talking about Fetty Wap. Fetty. I love oh, shopping the Fetty Wap, artist that comes from Jersey, represent and probably the most popular rapper to come from here. Like. I was searching New Jersey rappers, and the second result is Fatboy SSE. Who? So, we're, we're kind of lacking. <sighs> Fetty Wap in 2015 literally blew up the entire hip hop industry I with his sleeper hit yeah, at the time, Trap Queen, which came out a year prior before it even reached the Billboard charts. And when I tell you everybody was singing this song, and it was playing on every radio station, you couldn't escape right. it. I couldn't escape it. You Fetty, can't bro. tell me everyone and their doctors didn't know the opening six words of yeah, the refrain baby. of the song. I'm like, hey, what's up? Yeah, and on April 4th, 2015, the song went number one on the Billboard, beating Pitbull's song. Hey, now, jail when now, you beat Mr. Is it Fetty Wap in jail now? How many years did he get? God, I could have swore that he got like said this or some shit. Worldwide in the charts, you're destined for greatness. And number one on Billboard is a crazy feat, don't get me wrong. But this dude still could have been a one hit wonder. Come on, how many other people went number one only to be never heard of again? Yeah, like who the hell is the baby? Who? But bro proved everyone wrong, cause one month after Trap Queen went number one, he released 679 Drake Edition. Now, I have my qualms with Drake, but I like the song. I like the song. Proven he ain't no one hit wonder, but at least two. But soon after that, he released his self-titled studio album. Bro did not waste time. He saw the spotlight was on him, and he took his opportunity in the yeah, best way possible. Time, Again, my way. RGF Island. This album was filled with hit songs, or at least songs that would be played all over social media. Like Fetty Wap was basically the go-to artist to use in your vine back then. And this dude's music was being played all the time on repeat. He was also making the songs he was featured in hit. Like nobody listened to Save That Money for Little Dicky. Let's be honest. We're all listening for that hook. It seemed like this guy was unstoppable, and you could tell he felt that way too. Cause one month after he released his studio album he released another album he the was consistency a, is he was young boy before young boy weddy he was young boy before young boy drop an album after album crazy and to top it all off it was a collab album with none other than french montana if you don't know who French Montana is, it's that nigga that Diddy cropped out in that one photo, and for good reason. This man is not a good rapper. Never French in your Montana life so have ass. you been in a car or a function and someone oh, says, hey, put on that new French Montana. You never heard that. And if you have, you need to find new friends. These are the people that are bad influences that your mom and dad were talking about. Go hang out with murderers and drug dealers instead. At least those guys will have a more positive impact on you than a nigga that willingly listens to French Montana. You have free will in this beautiful life you have and you spend it on that you can't trust it. anyways their album was called coke zoo and it's 13 songs and it's a two can of ass now ass. fetty did have a better performance than french on here obviously but french had way more songs and verses than him and overall the album is just very bland no song sticks or or stands out. It's just a nothing burger, bro. It has no replay value whatsoever. And after this project, his music slowed down on coming out, which is yeah. fine. He don't have to be like young boy releasing an album every three days. <laughs> in 2016, the next year, he had a good few charting songs he was featured in, and also his own single, Wake Up, peaking at 50 in the Billboard Hot 100. And during this period of time, it felt like the calm before the storm. Freddie was still in people's mouths. He was still performing sold out shows and still charting. He was still very 
much popular. But after 2016, he kind of faded away out of the public eye more and more. He has released projects since then, but none of them created any buzz because overall, all of them were pretty lit. Meh. But also, there were no hits. See, Fetty Wap was very much a hit rapper, which is not a bad thing. It's just a bad thing when you want a fan base that would actually stay. And since he wasn't making any more hits, more people stopped talking about him. Plus, his new music sounds identical to the rest of his other music. I mean, you can say the same thing for other artists too, but Fetty's music also sounds dated. Like he was a product of his time and didn't try any new sounds or styles with his music to catch up to his own contemporaries. Other than that 2018 6 9 song Kiki, oh, yeah, he has so kind of disappeared from the popular space of music. And since then, in late 2022, he's pleaded guilty in drug charges. Oh, and he's shit, looking he at years. 5 to oh, 40 yeah. years in prison. That's tough. But also during his fall off, Trap Queen is diamond. 10 million units sold. So at least he will also have a legacy to look back on in hip hop history. Fetty Wap may have been a victim of falling down the stairs with a mediocre at best discography to look back on. There's another artist that I believe fell off, but on top. Goat Ye. Goat Ye was a solo artist from Australia who started his pro music career in 2001 when he released his self-titled EP. And during these years, he sent his EPs to radio stations, building a name for himself up to the release of his debut album, Like Drawing Blood, in 2006. And this album is actually pretty good. The songs have a unique flow and groove to them, and uh, I'm terrible at describing music I like. The music sounds good to my ears. And apparently, others thought the same because this album was pretty successful in the indie space. It was critically acclaimed. Oh, yeah, it was voted yeah. best album of 2006 in a listener poll by Triple J, a popular Australian radio station. The track Hearts a Mess was ranked number eight on the station's Hot 100 of 2006. It also went platinum in Australia. Like, bro wasn't a nobody before his real big hit happened. Or at least not a nobody in Aussie land. Yeah. It even won iTunes album of the year in the UK in 2008. Bro was kind of a big deal and he would become an even bigger one once he released his second song solo album oh, in 2011, Making Mirrors, where one of his lead singles- Bye, Justin, I'm finna go be a mod for another streamer. Oh, I see how it is. I see how it is. I see how it is. I got you. I got you. I got you. I got something for you when you come back. I got you. Somebody that I used to know, well, I, didn't know that I love this song so much. Now, I wish I could pick a different song as my favorite since I've listened to all of his solo music and also to seem more cultured, I guess. But this is my favorite song from him. No matter how many times I listen to it, even after 10 years later, it doesn't get old. Yeah, and the whole well, sound of the song is unique too. Early 2010s pop radio songs were sounding more like electronic EDM dance music sounding oh like a youth songs were sounding more like electronic Adam, EDM movie, dance bro, music okay, sounding like that. a YouTube gaming channel intro. You know, a lot of them sound dated too, but not this song. Never this song. And the song did get his flowers, a lot of them too. And after his world tour, all eyes are still on him, especially since he just won the record of the year at the Grammy Awards. The people yeah, were waiting awesome. for more music from him. Except that ain't happened. Bro went radio silent and- Bro. Not getting ad blocker, not getting ad blocker. And not in a people weren't- What the fuck? <laughs> interested in him no more kind of way. No, bro disappeared from everywhere. Social media even started rumors saying he was dead, where he went out of hibernation just to tweet, nah, I'm alive. Then not long after the tweet, he posted a blog post saying he no longer will be releasing solo music and Goat Ye will be no more. Huh? This dude just released one of the biggest songs of the decade and now he's quitting? That's Why? That's like shooting yourself in the foot. What the heck? Well, one, in the post, he said he wanted to only focus working on music with his band, The Basics. By the way, he's in the band. I didn't mention that. And in interviews, he talks as if he doesn't really want the insane fame in the first place, which is fine, I guess, if that's what he wanted. Plus, I bet he can have a steady living for the rest of his life on that one song alone. It's just missed potential. Because Goat Ye was genuinely a great artist who could have stayed for the long run instead of that one song being mostly his remembered legacy. Like, Bronte is a great song and has a greater music video. More people should see this. He still releases music with his band The Basics, but I haven't listened to them yet. Plus, I've heard he's mainly the drummer. But Goat Ye is a great musician, so I wouldn't be surprised if I do like his band too. And maybe, hopefully, he could release more solo music in the future. Alright, I'ma stop glazing this dude and move on to the next man. 
or baby. Da baby. Da baby. Rapper. Me- I used to, I used to, I'm not gonna lie, I used to be a big Da Baby fan too. Back in like 2018, 2019. Him and Stunner for Vegas, bro. Both of them, especially Stunner for Vegas. Stunner for Vegas sucks. I mean, it's ass. I don't even know if he makes music anymore. Meme, uh, yeah. uh, car. He's mad popular. Also, some of y'all might yeah, be thinking, many, uh, I thought this was the best artist to fall off. Why he here? And yeah, he might not be nowhere near the best in anything, but I like Kirk and Baby on Baby. You know, yeah, I, like I think he is a better discography than Fetty Wap. So now, although this guy's fall from grace is kind of recent, it's very evident that this man is 100% not the big star he used hey, to be. Bro in 2019 and 2020 was on top. He released three albums that made it to the top of the charts. Had hit after hit. Bro's song Rockstar with Roddy Rich was number one for seven straight weeks. He was nominated like for six played, Grammys. Played. Endorsement after endorsement. TV performance after performance. Getting away with murder at a Walmart. It seemed like nobody could stop this dude. But then this guy decided to be in a bunch of controversies. Right, right. Assaulting airport kiosk workers. Slapping a female fan for trying to take a picture of him. Beefing with Jojo Siwa just because she's taller than him. Bro was just constantly getting in trouble. And the final straw was that 2021 Rolling Loud set where he just started saying the dumbest shit. Ladies. If you like to shove bone balls and pineapples up your pussy, put your cell phone flashlights in the air right now. And fellas, if you like sucking on balls, leave. Oh, man. I ain't with that gay stuff, man. Leave, man. I ain't with Frank Ocean. Leave that stuff at home. Yeah, dude said some homophobic stuff, and basically the whole industry turned on him. He lost a majority of his endorsements. Bro was pulled off of concert lineups, and overall, the public wasn't really messing with him no more. He even one time had to cancel his New Orleans show because it only sold 500 tickets in a venue that's supposed to seat 14,000. If that doesn't indicate a fall off, then I don't know what does. His recent album, Baby on Baby 2, only sold 17K first week versus his 2019-2020 albums that would sell 150k get it number one on the billboard charts it just seems like bro really messed his own career up for nothing and some people still might say he hasn't fallen off look at his spotify monthly listeners bro still pulling big numbers okay remove the dua lipa song and that cuts off at least half of these listeners off minimum then remove rockstar that's probably minus five million right there most of this dude's listeners are only listening to his hits that most of the time he's only featured in. It ain't that hard bro, to pinpoint this hits. info. I and do I feel hits. bad for his fall off? Forever, no! Bro. bro did this entirely himself. Even on his new album, Baby on Baby 2, on his song, Socks, he says, plus 20 million for keeping it real, bitch. I don't give a fuck about no money. Bro isn't huh? even sorry. He basically said all the apologies he said in the past don't mean nothing. But who knows? Maybe he will make a comeback. He has a new song that debuted number 92 on the oh, Billboard no, Hot cool. 100. Although the Repo Reaper on TikTok is the only reason his song is getting <laughs> any streams. That tells you where his career is at right now. All right, I got to move on from this dude and talk about a person that... Genuinely hurts my soul that I had to say this. Chance the Rapper. Chance the Rapper started his career with his breakout mixtape, 10 Day, which was okay. But then the year after, Acid Rap came out and it was amazing. In my opinion, it's up there with hip hop's best all time mixtapes. Bro, by a unique sound to hip hop with the fun, bouncy, and sometimes melodic tracks here. The whole mixtape brings a supreme vibe to it that a lot of other projects don't bring. Also, his ad libs going, ah, ah. Ah, yeah, ah. Every track, breathtaking, revolutionary. Acid Rap is just a great project that introduces yeah, talents to a much nice. wider audience. Bro was destined to be big, especially upon the release of his album, on, Mixtape, The Coloring Book. In middle school, got even a lot. What? Cool, I adored this album. It was constantly in my rotation. And personally, I loved it more than Acid Rap. I had every song on here on had, repeat. And my favorite song, song on the album would change like every week. My favorite is All We Got. No, it's Angels. No, it's No Problems. No, it's Juke Jam. This album is like perfect. I mean, I don't think it's top tier hip hop music or anything. But I have zero complaints about the zero album complaints. other than the mixing. 
and all night. But I can forgive it. This album is great. I love this album so much. He deserved I all the praise so and long, awards so long, he got from it. This album was a big part of my middle school days. Yep. And Chance was definitely one of my favorite rappers, period, yep. during that time. I was deeply anticipating more Chance music in the future. I mean, he met Kanye West. He was never going to Wait, fail, Kanye right? Was so his next project that was, was bound Kanye to... Was like, Kanye was like, your album, your album name is so 20K, your ass. It was like, you fell off. It's just like, okay, okay. <laughs> so Succeed. Funny. And then it happened. Three years after the coloring book, he announced his debut album, The Big Day. That shit was so ass. Holy guacamole. That this album was, was a so big bad. day for me. I couldn't wait. I was ready. And on Friday morning, 12 a.m., on release, I put on my headphones. I could feel the sweat going down my gluteus maximus. I am so happy. Then I pressed play. And as I was listening to the music, the songs felt a little off. Yeah. A bit different from his previous music. It was perhaps a little more experimental. Or something. Maybe not that. Wait. Dog, what the fuck am I listening to? <laughs> That's exactly what I said, chat. Dreadful. Gobbledygook. And not in like a French Montana Fetty Wap Coke Zoo nothing burger kind of way. Because if it was, it would actually be better. Because with a nothing burger, you just get no nutrition or enjoyment out of it. The big day is like receiving a lobotomy. Like first, this album had like eight writers and eight producers for each song. Two, the lyrics are just, just look at this. Peanut butter jelly with a baseball bat. Peanut butter jelly with a peanut butter jelly. It will break y'all back. <laughs> By the way, almost all the lyrics on this album are this corny and this trash. And when he's not talking about peanut butter jelly or God, he's talking about loving his wife. Now, I understand you love your wife, dude. I love your wife, too. But if you're not going to talk about your love for her in any kind of interesting way or do it in any other creative way other than just say, I love her and she's beautiful. She's my queen. Bro, I don't want to. I don't. Can you talk about something else? Can you talk about doing drugs again, please? <laughs> Every song has the same rhythm, tone, feel. It doesn't change or do anything interesting, which is even worse since this album is almost an hour and 20 minutes long. Honestly, this is probably the most disappointing album from an artist I loved oh, I've ever bad, listened to. Because even with the Terrible. albums I don't Your like ass. from artists that I love, there's usually a good few tracks I would come back to, you know, that I like, but not this one. Not a single one on this album has replay value. And when I say these things, I don't mean for anybody to shit on Chance, because I still think overall he's a great artist. It's just this project upsets me so much because this has been basically his last album for the past almost four years. And the album sucks. The man has released very little music since this album, outside from that Christmas mixtape he released in 2020 with Omarion or whoever. I don't care. I'm not listening to that. That's not a real project. And I feel like this dude knows the bad reception his album gets. That's why he's been wearing his number three hat promoting coloring book for the past seven years. I swear this hat is surgically attached to this man. Take that shit <laughs> off already. Damn. Maybe I'm looking at Chance's <laughs> last project through chance, rose tinted glasses because I listened That's to those albums last. I was a kid and even though the big day is a terrible album I am so happy for the current success of chance in his career I love seeing him being part of modern media despite not releasing any music in a number of years I am so happy for him he might have fallen off quality wise but I only want future uphill success for him no matter if he releases any more music or not and if he does release more music hopefully this album was just a hiccup and he starts burping again and yeah I feel like I've discussed enough in this video although I definitely could make a part two to this there's a few others off the top of my head that i could list like coldplay and maroon 5 yeah, cold like, play, how you go from this to this them, like seriously also there's one more that fell off quality wise that i can rant about for days on end but that's for another day i feel like i've said my piece and in conclusion in conclusion I kind of like hot shower. Yeah, hot shower. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I kinda like it's kind of grown on me. I'm sorry. I kind of I like hot shower too. You ain't the only one, bro. You are not the only one, my friend.
Shout out to D Generosity, man. That's my guy. Love his videos, bro. We'll talk. All right, bye, YouTube. Bye, y'all.